Ah, what's going on, guys? Today's Wednesday. Well, for another like forty-five minutes, it's Wednesday. But um, yeah, today what we're gonna be doing Wednesday is web, and we're gonna be working with Vapor. Um, there's just one little thing that I wanted to test out, or w one little thing that I wanted to learn, um, because it's kind of important, which is we're going to be using Vapor and Swift. And um, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to figure out how to use authentication uh, in order to use an API. So essentially, you would have to log in to the database before you're able to actually make an API request. And I kind of want to figure out how to do that. Um, but I'm willing to cut myself off because I'm, I'm only going to go for like about 45 minutes and then, um, you know, if I can't figure it out, then I can't figure it out. We're going to have to do it another day because I, I have to get to bed. But, yeah, we're going to see what happens. Hopefully, I'll be able to knock it out in, in a reasonable amount of time. So, let's get to it. All right. So, what we want to do, I'm going to just start off with a new window. And... Um, and I think that there's actually a template. So we're gonna say Swift Vapor template. I believe there's an auth template, yeah. Perfect. All right, so that's what we're gonna be using. So let's go and make a new Vapor project. Hey, Kilo, why you stop full application series? Um, because, uh, they don't feel like doing it anymore. Uh, the real reason is because, um, well, one, it wasn't really getting that many views. Um, I started getting kind of bored of it. Also, uh, while I was doing that, I was ending. I I was also buying a house, and I kind of had like a little mental breakdown during um, during the house buying process. So what ended up happening was I decided to not do anything on YouTube, uh, which is why you'll see like a, a good three month gap um, back sometime last year in between like February to like June or July or something like that. So those are the main reasons why I stopped. Um, may eventually bring it back, but I honestly don't think that people were really caring for it. I mean, there's like a few people that were caring for it, but I just started getting bored of it, honestly, because uh, it was taking too long and, and the UI started to, I didn't really like the the way that the UI was going. Um, what I am planning on doing is starting to do like um, this little series where it's, I want to see what I can do. It's going to be a speed build. So it's going to be like building everything from scratch and, and I'm going to make it into like a 10 minute video um like however long that it takes me so they're going to be speed build speed build videos they're supposed to be coming out on sundays but i've been really busy and i think i'm going to launch that series after wwdc so yeah all right let's go ahead and change directories and um what we're going to do is we're going to get into code research uh nope desktop Code research. There we go. And then we're going to do vapor create. And we'll call this um, uh, need, need the keys. Like that. I think we can do dashes actually with vapor, right? Need the keys and then the template is going to be equal to auth. Um, okay, I always get them confused. So it's not new. It's it's uh, it's not create. It's new. Vapor new. There we go. Those series were really nice in Swift back uh, in Swift backend. Was I doing backend? Hmm. Um, well, I'm going to eventually do a course on server-side Swift uh, for both Vapor and Kitura, but 
um, time is a huge factor right now. It's really hard to do all this stuff that I want to do. Um, let's see, and we're going to say vapor update um, dash y. So we do vapor update, yeah. All right, so let me see. And then we'll do swift vapor auth, and then I don't go to medium.com anymore. So we're gonna take that out of the search, the search results. Um, let's see, token authentication in vapor three. Let's see. I wonder what it will give us. We're gonna have to create a token. But the good thing is that there is something here. Let's see. So token authentication in Vapor 3. The tutorial is, is a continuation of the previous tutorial, which can be found here. The tutorial will begin where we where the last one left off, and you can download the project for beginning this tutorial here. For those who did not complete the first short tutorial, just to catch you up to speed. We have a user model with properties of username, password. We have a user controller that, with actions for creating a user and login. I'm using Postgres as my database. Oh, that's right. Might have to create a database and it's been a while since I did that. Um, package resolve file is most likely out of date. Crypto kit. Um, generating Xcode project failed. Maybe because we have to do vapor build. I always forget which order these things need to go in. All right, so he's using Postgres. Let's go ahead and check this out real quick. No, 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 not that one. All right, so let's see. Damn, I'm not even sure if I still have a... Okay. Let's see, LS. It's not building the project, that's super weird. File is most likely severely out of date and is preventing correct resolution. Delete the resolved file. Damn. Is that true? Let's see. Well, it looks like we can't do that. Change directory. It looks like the um looks like maybe the auth one is out of date, which is crazy. This might be out of date. I'm not sure. Yeah, it's out of date, I think. Probably because it's in Swift 4 up to date for Vapor 4. Looks like we're not going to be able to do this today probably because vapor doesn't want to work. So what can you do? Vapor new uh, testing off. Maybe I did the wrong thing. Let's go ahead and try it like this. Um, template equals API, which is kind of weird because I just did this not too long ago. Vapor or change directory testing. Mm. Um, vapor build. Let's see if we can do this. Actually, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to see if we can build an API one. 
And then um, what I'll do is I'll do the vapor update and see if that works. If this one works, then we can try to do it on another one as well and see what happens there. But this one does look like it it should be up to date. If it, well, might not be using the correct keychain or something like that. And then I think because what I usually do is I do it in reverse order. I think that's what I might have messed up. I usually do the build. And then what I usually do after that is I do the um, the update dash Y. So I'm hoping that that's the problem. The problem, the biggest problem with Vapor is that it just takes a while to get everything up and running. And if this thing requires a database, then it's really going to be a pain. All right, let's see. Um, I don't even remember how to connect to my SQL. Um, let's see, vapor update dash Y. Uh, Postgres login. And I need to do that through uh, PSQL. Database and server name. Yeah, I don't remember any of that. All right. Isn't it MySQL.U? Could be. Uh, that looks right though. Let's see. Uh, let's see. My SQL dash U. What is it? Maybe Kilo? Access denied. And then. Um, uh, let's see what's going on. I code probably should have got a, a refresher on some of this stuff. Okay. So this is working while I'm trying to get into my SQL. Um, Maybe, maybe it was Kyle. Yeah, this was probably a bad topic. I haven't dealt with this in a long time. Let me see if I saved it to my, my keychain. My sequel. Nope. Postgres, PSQL, nope, didn't save any of it, can't even remember how to get in, let me see, PSQL, could not connect, it's the server running locally and accepting sudo PSQL. Let's think. Um, do we really need a database though? Let me think. Actually, I don't think we need one. We should be able to get away with MySQL. 
or sequel light i mean yeah we should be able to get away with sequel light um okay uh let's try this one more time what we're gonna do is um i'm gonna try in the reverse order and we're gonna be working in the background trying to figure other stuff out at the same time so uh what we'll do is we'll do vapor vapor new and then we'll say auth again um template is equal to auth all right so we'll change directories into auth um, dash again and then we'll do vapor build this time let's see if vapor build is going to work um i'm pretty sure that we don't need um a real database i believe that we should be able to do this with um with MySQL. So let's go over to the routes. Let's see what we got in here. And as you can see, we do have a to do controller, which means that we can create an object. So let's go ahead and take a look at our controllers. And we have um, we have a create. So what's the route to create? It's just doing a post on to do's. Let's go ahead and whoa, not on there. Let's go ahead and run this and we should be able to create if we're using SQLite, which we are, as you can see right here. So that should serve as our database. You sure you set up a separate user? Maybe it's just you dot root. <laughs> you are probably right. Whoa, what happened? Yeah, see, this is, uh, yeah, there's something wrong with the, the auth template. It's crazy. Um, yeah, looks like it might be broken. We'll try to do a vapor update just to see what happens. But it looks like, uh, the the auth one might be broken uh no but you're absolutely right it probably is root um root um but i don't want to does it even have a password okay let me see dot p um Cause now it's going to bother me. Um, yeah, that's all right. We don't need, we don't need it anyways. Yeah. See this one's broken. So the auth is broken. That's okay. All right. So we have this running on local host. Let's blow this up so you guys can actually see it. And we're going to do it like so and like so all right so um let's grab our rested app and we're gonna just do typical 8080 to do's we're gonna do a post request and um, let's see what our post object is expecting. ID and a title. Um, so I'm guessing just a title is needed. We'll do JSON encoded and we'll say title and we'll say uh, testing. Let's go ahead and send that up and there we go. Now, when we do another one and we send that up, we should get ID two. When we do, um, let me see if this supports tabbing. I think it does. Um, 
it's okay we'll just do a new window that's all right and when we do this 80 80 on to do's and we do a get we should get back two objects all right so sqlite is in place and it's working which is pretty cool all right so then what do we want to do we need to figure out how to add authentication to this specific object and i'm going to assume that the author did not start off with the auth template either so let's see all right so add the token model first add the token model create a new class called token like so we're gonna copy it doesn't make sense for me to do this I just want to make sure that this works um, you see this dot ID don't like that let's open the nope that's not what I wanted Let's open up his first tutorial, see what his user object actually looks like, because if it has a dot ID, I need to know about that. All right, we're going to look at his, uh, let's see, sources, I think. App model. No, Kyle, you misclicked user all right looking good so he doesn't have some weird thing called id uh so that's good so what we're gonna do and this is going to be it looks like a sql light model is we're gonna do exactly what he told us create a token class so let's do that now and we're just gonna say token like so gonna definitely definitely need vapor we may let's see we're gonna need a SQL like class SQL light uh, or SQL well SQL light and then we're gonna import let's see if it'll give it to me SQL light 3 should have some type of SQL light model SQ light Ugh. don't you hate when that happens they don't give you what you need fluent sql light that's what we need i forgot that everything's prefixed by fluent sql light model like that um doesn't conform does not conform let's take a look um, let's go ahead and add this extension see if that will fix it uh, let's see and we want to have a to do ID to do ID to do hold on this was to do ID to do ID um let's see what else did he import into that into this one um vapor interesting oh no this isn't what we're what we need to be looking at we need to be looking at the actual token which doesn't seem to be on this one so we need to go to the models again go to the token all right let's see he has that 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 and we need authentication let's import 
of to do ID to do ID like that. Alrighty. Let's unwrap this. Let's see if it'll work now. And we want to have um, to do instead of user. And we'll pass in the to do ID like that. Let's see if he even has parent on his. Uh, needs to be. Oh, okay, so we need to pass in token user. Okay. So token and to do. I remember this. This is essentially creating a relationship. You sure? You sure you set up a separate user? Maybe. Uh, no, <laughs> I don't know why I thought you guys had sent me another message. All right. So, um, actually, it would just be easier to just copy all this stuff out because I'm just going to go through it. I just want to see what steps he's going through first. Maybe that will help me in the long run. Uh, kind of weird that he didn't include it right here, the correct code. All right, there are two protocols that our token model must conform to, authentication.token and bearer authenticatable. And there is one additional protocol that our user model must conform to, uh, token authenticatable. First, let's conform our user, our to-do, uh, to token authenticatable with the following. So we're gonna go back over to our to-do, we're gonna make it conform to token authenticatable. We'll put it up here, extension um, to-do going to be token authenticatable uh, probably need to import authentication uh, uh, what is it called freaking hate the um, import statements they always get me that's what I was writing, but it said that it wasn't there. But then again, you know how Xcode can be. Import authentication. Um, which means that we didn't properly uh, get the dependency. So let's go back into the app uh, configure. No, not configure. Uh, app. Helpers, um, where am I trying to go? Oh, to the package file, that's what we need. All right, so, what is all this? This doesn't seem right. Wait, does it look different now? Object. Am I tripping or is his different? Yeah, his looks different now. It's kind of weird. Um, shouldn't be doing that. Uh, this is the package.swift file, right? No, this is package.resolved. That would be why. Package.swift is what I want. There we go. So, oh, might have to get that garbage. Uh, uh, that might not be good. Okay. Well, let's see what happens. So, and then we also need to make sure we add it to the targets under authentication. All right, so what we should be able to do, go back over to the token, make sure to do, make sure that authentic, uh, what you want to call it, all that stuff is commented out. 
and what we can do is we can go to the terminal don't remember closing it but that's okay so we're going to change directory to what uh, did I put it in code research code research and then um, this is what testing off all right and then we'll do vapor dot or vapor upgrade vapor upgrade or vapor update yeah update dash y upgrade i think actually up upgrades the entire vapor thing and we don't want that that takes super long all right so this is going to take a little while hope this is a stable one that's going to work with our project um we'll just do keep whatever looked like it worked and now we should be able to say import authentication and do token authenticatable there we go and it's gonna say hey you're not doing something and I'm gonna be like yeah I know leave me alone so type alias uh, token type and I think we're gonna set this to token oh boy that was a big one somebody bless me bless me please bless me please and then we're gonna fix this hmm kind of weird you know how how Xcode can be though it's all right um, I think the problem here is that token doesn't conform to whatever need it needs to be conforming to so that's all right um, now we need to go to our token say that it's bearer authentication whatever right so we're gonna import authentication import uh, authentication and then we're gonna do extension and we're gonna say token conforms to bearer whatever right and then we're gonna have to put in some something right there and token key writable um, and then we're gonna say token I remember doing all this too that's crazy I actually did all this before token key I just kind of figured because it was done in um, it was it was done in um, which we call it hold on yeah token doesn't have a path called token that's the weird thing he's giving weird instructions but it's okay maybe he's trying to teach in a specific way um, Hmm. You know what? I'm going to use his finished project because I don't know. Seems kind of weird that he's going in this type of order. Um, but yeah, back to what I was saying. I've done a lot with Vapor, but the fact that I did it in Vapor 2 and now that Vapor 3 is completely different, I just figured like, oh, my, my app is just complete garbage now that you guys just decided to change everything so yeah yeah that's cool all right so yeah once again he's missing out a couple of key points in the article maybe there was a um... yeah that's super weird maybe he was uh trying to teach it or maybe it was written like at the very beginning don't really know All right, and what we're gonna do is because we can't really rely on all that other stuff in the article, we're just going to do this. Um, we're 
going to get rid of this. We're going to make sure that we're in the token class. Yep. Might need to mark it as final. No, it's already marked as final. Um, this one will be to do. To do ID. Uh, this one will also be to do ID. Um, to do. Oh. Oh, hold on. That's right, you need a user class in order to... Yikes, we're doing it all wrong. That's no fun. All right, well, this is how you learn. So what we'll do, whoa, ho, 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 whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm gonna copy all this, right? And we're just gonna throw it in there and we're gonna see what happens when we try to make it work. Cause I'm supposed to be done in about 10 minutes. Doesn't look like I'm gonna be done in about 10 minutes. So let's go ahead and do this. Save a little bit of time. Um, don't need this. Password authenticatable. Uh, we need to import or fluent SQLite, SQL, SQLite, right? Um, this is going to be a SQLite model. Right, right, all right, cool, looking good. Um, let's actually get rid of this because we don't, let's see. Yeah, well, what I'm trying to accomplish, we don't need this. So I'm actually going to get rid of it. Um, we're going to take his token object. We're gonna use that as well. Let's see. All right, and I'm gonna go back over all this stuff to check it out. And this one, we just wanna to change to Fluent SQL SQLite, like that. And this will also be a SQLite model because databases actually don't have a whole lot to do with this. Um. Helpers, what is he actually doing in there that's so special? What are you doing in here? I don't, I don't think that's actually necessary. Is you, you ID actually available to us? Because that, that'll do the job. should be fine all right and then what we're gonna need to do is we're gonna need to make sure that uh, we have our configure set up properly because um, I think it takes in a user yeah see we need to do this user right now what we also need to do is we need to change our controller to a user controller we're gonna change all this to user. Let's see, it's gonna return an array of users. This is also gonna return a future user. Uh, user. Missed one right here, user. Uh, let's see, user. Going to say user decode a user, yeah. Okay, we're gonna be able to delete a user. Um, we're gonna say user user transform. 
form to dot okay okay cool all right so uh we have the user controller set up now we need to go to our routes make sure that this is done uh we're gonna get rid of these don't need that user controller uh, user users All right, so I think this actually might work. Um, I th yeah, okay, so it looks like it might be working. Let's go ahead and try to get the users. It should give us an error. Um, not giving us an error quite yet. because there must be something that we have to change on the actual routes. So let's let's go ahead and take a look at that. I believe that there was some it's kind of I think it's called middleware that you would usually put on your object or on your uh, controller. So I think we need to set up the middleware. So let's go ahead and look at the routes. What is it doing? Yeah, see, token authentication middleware. So, um, let's see. When we do create, so we're actually going to change these. We use most of his app, might as well just keep going, right? So let's go ahead and see what he's doing with his controller. All right. And we're going to look back over all of this in a bit, but right now I'm just going to use it to get it working. All right. So he's creating a user. He's allowing a user to log in. Let password verifier. What do you got in here? What is this? Authentication? Import authentication. Nope, did not type that. Thank you for asking though. All right, so we need to create a user. When you create a user, it should be returning a user with a token. Doesn't look like that's going to be the case, but we'll see what happens. Um, it should actually be calling login, I believe. All right, that's fine. Uh, let's go ahead and steal his controller. Let's see how, uh, is this a controller? I meant the routes. Now, um, this part we don't need. I don't think. But, oh, actually we do. Looks like, yeah, there is some logic in here that's decoding and stuff. All right, let's go ahead and throw this in there. We're going to replace everything like that. All right. And what I would usually actually call this is sign up. That's probably what I would call it. I'd probably call this one login. Makes more sense to me. Uh, user authentication middleware. So this is the thing that kind of checks. 
and then authenticated routes uh, router dot so router dot grouped so anything that's going to be using authenticated routes means that it does need um, it does need to uh, secret secret sauce essentially what it what it needs to do hold on yeah hmm. hold on this protected route This I don't fully understand, but let's go ahead and try to sign up and let's see if we can do that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do um, sign up and this is going to be a post request. See how they're both posts. And we're gonna send that as JSON. What we'll do is we'll add a username, which will be Kilo and a password. which is gonna be ABC123, right? Because I like my passwords to be super complex. Super duper. I'm gonna change this as well to login. Um, I'm gonna put in the same thing, username, kilo, uh, and then the password is going to be ABC123 one two four so that we can get a failed login i just want to see if it works or not um this obviously wouldn't work because we're not running it quite yet so let's go ahead and run that okay first we want to try to sign up so let's go ahead and try to sign up 500 uh model default database is required to use request as Default database is required to use request as database connectable. Let's see. A suggested fix, ensure that you are using the model label when registering this model to your migration config if it is a migration, migrations add. Oh, that's right. We need to do token. Hold on. So in the configure, migrations dot add model, and this is going to be token dot self, and this is going to be dot sqlite. Like so, that's where I messed up. So let's go ahead and try this again. We got 200, okay, and this is the token and the username. Awesome. So let's go ahead and do another window And we're going to try to get secret sauce. Did I, did I do capitalization camel casing? Let's just copy it. Why not? Copy and everything else. All right. So when we do uh, get uh, no service available for um, authentication cache. Uh, this is a really bad error. Um, that's a super bad error. Yeah, that's so bad. Um, but what we'll do is basic authentication. Let me think, how do we do this?
this. Oh, here we go. Where's the bearer? I think it needs to be bearer. Authentic uh, I'm sorry, authentication. That's what it needs to be. So, is it authorization? It's been a while. It might be authorization. Bearer. Pass it this. Is this even working anymore? Oh, you know what? Hold on. Let's try this one more time. Um, it might be because we don't have any uh, any users in there. So, which it shouldn't blow up, but whatever. So we're gonna send that. We get that back. Let's grab this. I'm gonna copy that over here to secret sauce, paste it in there like that. And then let's go ahead and uncheck this. Let's see what happens when I try to send. Okay, that's kind of stupid. Shouldn't it be a 500 error, but whatever. Okay, authentication cache. So register a service for authentication cache services. Um, okay. Do I need to add that somewhere? So what we need to do is we need to take a look at the configure document. Um, yeah, under sources, app, under configure, what is he doing? So he's using authentication somewhere, and this is his database. Um, let me think. Migrations, we have that. We have this. Authentication provider. This is the problem. So let's go to our configure. And we need this. This is the problem. And we need to import um, authentication. And since you're going to auto complete anyways, I'm just going to delete from there. We're going to run that. And that should do it. I believe this will be done. So let's go ahead and try to run this uh, one more time. And we're going to do it without this. We're going to do user has not been authenticated. Perfect. That's exactly what we're looking for. So what we need to do is we need to sign up. Perfect. We need to get this bearer token. We're going to copy that. I'm going to throw it in here. Paste it like so. I'm going to say enter. Now let me in. Um, turn it on first, Kyle. And as you can see, we get back the token. Um, the token that we sent to AE14. AE14, yep. So we get back and the user name, which is pretty good. Pretty good. So, um, that's not what I would want to send back. Right? So, um, let's go back over to our routes and let's take a look at what this is actually doing because it's not doing exactly what we want. So, this is going to return a public user, which is essentially going to return. Um, well, let's go ahead and take a look at that. What is a public user? Oh, interesting. This is how they want to do it. That's a pretty good way to do it. I like that. 
So what I'll do is I'll go back through and I'll explain everything for you guys. But uh, first, what we want to do is we don't want to return this. I want to return a string. I just want to say, yeah, you did it. Because if I could return a string, I could return whatever I want. And um, yeah. Dot first. Let and what we'll do is on request let's see user token type hold on require authenticated let's well, hold on before we do all that craziness and just delete it first what i'm going to try is i'm going to try yay right and um we'll pass in the user's name if it works so user dot name yay um came back I don't know whatever so let's go ahead and run this again and what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and sign up once again there we go send we need to get back this token and what you'll see is before I do that if I go ahead and try to get secret sauce right now with the wrong token it's gonna fail user has not been authenticated right and then if I put the right one in it should say yay kilo came back bam that was kind of scary um cool all right so if I wanted to say um, users what I could do is request authentication yeah that's kind of weird um we could do user let's see user dot query auth tokens dot query on request dot all I don't want that though so let's go ahead and try this oh hold on before you try to go crazy user dot query on request dot all and this is gonna a future array of users And we're going to do that. So this is just going to be users. So let's go ahead and put that into effect. And let's see if we get back all of our users. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to make a couple of users. We're going to sign up, right? Kilo. Um, we should be able to sign up with any Buddy. So, um, Kilo, um, we'll do Loco, we'll do Kyle, and then we'll do Lee. So, we should have four users in there, right? 
And then um, what we're going to do is we're just going to take Lee. We're going to take their token. And let's just go ahead and try to sign in with Lee. Make sure that he's ID four. Um, it's kind of weird that it would require a token unauthorized, really? Yeah, that's kind of weird. I would have assumed that authorization that you would not have a token when you're logging in doesn't seem right. But who knows? Um, okay. Well, let's uh, let's go ahead and take a look if it even worked. It might not have worked. I might not have been sending everything. So let's go ahead and try this again. No, it it was. It was sending them back. Okay, well, let's just try users. Let's try to get the users, right? Not sure what's going on with the other thing, but this should work, right? So let's get back our users, and yeah, there you go. Um, you probably don't want to send back the actual users. You probably want to send back the, the public user. And that's okay. Uh, query all, and then we'll say all. Um, yeah, you would have to map it. So all dot map. Nope, not there. Not there. Right here. I'm gonna have to map it. to a specific type and we're going to say user um, dot public user and this is actually going to be an array and we're going to say dot self and then we're going to do that and we're going to say uh, public user or we're going to say regular user user in we're gonna, we don't need this user in and we're going to return a user dot public uh let's see let's see the problem is is that it's kind of wonky Oh, really? Um, you have to initialize it. So um, user dot public user, and then we're going to initialize that with um, the users dot username. And the user dot token, right? Um, let's see. Okay, so that didn't work. Map dot else. Let's see. We did uh, first. We don't want first. And I'm pretty sure we do want a map. The only problem is that map doesn't mean the same thing in here so for each um yeah so what i guess we what we can do is we can just say users since this is what's going in there say users dot an actual normal map and then we just say uh, user dot 
public user and then initialize this with dot username and then dot token. Oh, you can't even do that because um, it would have to be turned into, you'd have to do the auth token. Ah. Sneaky, don't like that. So user, and then we're gonna say user dot auth tokens dot query on request map to that. And think that this becomes something different now. Users um token type right dot, dot first ah i see why you did this okay yeah yeah it's starting to make more sense now so uh structure hell <laughs> what's up ring yeah it's a little bit confusing, but essentially this is the token, I believe. So this is the user's token. So users dot first, uh, no, not first part, just first, you got a first dot token and it has a token, right? So what we can do is we can say uh, tokens. Um, only problem with this is that you don't actually have the, the object in question. And we would have to look up that user. Um because they wouldn't all be that. So I think the problem here is that the way that he structured the data, it works for his type of data that he wants to send back. Uh, because you wouldn't normally send back a token in a list. Like you wouldn't send back everybody and their tokens. That's dangerous as hell. And I'm just trying to think, is there a way that we can accomplish this? I'll give it 10 minutes. Let's think. Okay, if we're getting back a bunch of tokens, um, you know, I don't think that you can do it like that. You would have to query the individual's thing so what we actually want is to do this user right we're gonna get all of the users so then that means what we have to do is we have to say user right there right uh, let's see this is actually users um, so if I look at users this is going to be an array of users now uh, in here what I need to do is I need to map this to let's think because it doesn't work necessarily that way so um what we need to do is we need to return and we're going to do users dot a normal map you know like that whoa the hell So let's just do a normal map, right? And this will be, uh, we actually shouldn't need this at all. And we should have a user right here in. So when we're going to um, loop through each of these, what we need to do is we need to return a public user. And we can't do that until we do a lookup of that user's token. 
So what we'll do is we'll say user dot dot auth tokens dot query on the request itself we get back the first one the first one and you're going to see that this is going to return a future user token type right so now what we have is the actual token and what we want to do is we want to map that dot map map to we want to map to um a user public user user dot public public user dot self and then we're gonna say that the token In, and we're going to actually return a public a, a user dot public user user dot public user we're going to initiate uh, initialize that with um, actually we did need this uh, no do we no we're grabbing the user from up here so we're gonna initialize that with the user and the token dot token uh, user dot username there we go and let's go ahead and do that let's force and rabbit let's see what happens so this technically should work Um, it's pretty ugly, but it should definitely work. Uh, what we need to do is we need to do a flat, a flat map. There we go. Mm, let's see. Maybe it's this that needs to be the flat map to actually this is a problem right here well no actually it's not because we're using it um, what are you saying all right cannot convert a future um, so what we need to say is this is gonna return a future like that and then what we'll do is because that's going to give an error up on this line we need to say flat map up here and I think that might fix that um, yeah Actually, let's see if we do the flat map up there. If it gets rid of, whoa. If we do the future up there, does it get rid of it? And then this map, there should be no problem with this map. Let's go ahead and try to run it, see what happens. All right, can I can convert value? Um, this one should be a flat map, honestly, flat map. To that, and cannot convert this to that. Um. So we we'll put future right here. Let's 
Let's see what happens. All right. Um, a future public user dot self cannot convert this type to that type. Cannot convert this type. Okay. Let's try to run that. Let's see. I need correct errors so I can fix this. All right. You cannot convert this type to that type. Um, watch me. All right. So, okay. So cannot convert this type to that type. Ooh, ooh, I see, I see the problem there. Um, I do see the problem there. So, um, the problem is that we have an array of future events. Um, so we actually want it to be around that. Hmm. That's crazy. Um, yeah, that's definitely crazy. What happens? If we just make it accept that, I wonder what comes back. This definitely wouldn't be ideal, but I want to see what happens. Um, so future like this. And run it. Let's see what happens. You don't like it. You don't, you don't like it. Cannot convert this to that. Let's just see what happens. When we do that. Um, yeah, I give up. I think the... The main problem is that we're trying to return um, the public user, um, and that's not actually what I want. So, what we could do is we can change the model. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to um, authenticated user. Let's see where it breaks. We want to return an authenticated user right there and right here um, authenticated 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 let's see where else it breaks authenticated Authenticated, authenticated, there we go. Let's see where else it breaks. Right here, and this is in the routes. 
and this is actually going to be public so that's actually correct so now when we go back over to user we're gonna have um, authenticated user and then we're gonna actually have um, a public user now a public user a public user needs to conform to content as well and what a public user would do is it would actually return the ID because you would probably need the ID in a lot of cases. So what we'll do is we'll say uh, var ID is going to be a type int and then um, var user name is going to be a type string like so. Now what we want are a future list of public users. And what we'll do is we'll get, we'll do user dot uh, query on the request, right? And then we'll say all and what we want to do is we want to map to um, we want to map to and we're going to actually return this so return so we're getting all the users so this should um, this is going to be that's going to be a user array. What we want to map to is a, I believe we want to do user dot public public user self. And this is actually going to be our, an array. So we want to map to an array of that. And then on here, get rid of this and this is just going to be our regular users um not really sure what the hell you're saying but you're wrong that should work uh public user yeah let's double check our user object public user yeah, that should work. Pretty sure. Um, public user. Yeah. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through all the users. And we're actually going to return uh, users dot map. And this is actually going to give us a user in and what we're going to do is we're going to return a public uh, our user dot public user and we're going to initialize that with an id which is going to be the user dot id and a username which is going to be the user dot username like so and it's optional so we're gonna force unwrap it because it shouldn't crash and let's go ahead and run this and let's see what happens all right so let's go ahead and sign up with Lee right Lee, then we're going to sign up with Kyle. We're just going to do this in reverse order the way that we did it before. Kyle, then we're going to sign up with Loco. Then we're going to sign up with Ky uh, Kilo. And let's go ahead and check that. We get back this token. We're going to copy that. And when we do the lookup for users, 
shouldn't have done that. Yeah, I definitely shouldn't have done that. Is it running? Yeah, it shouldn't. It definitely shouldn't have done that, but it's okay. Uh, is it going through the auth routes? It is. So well, let's go ahead and try this the way that he did it. And essentially you wanna make sure that you can get the user back. So uh, controllers, user controller, or no, we wanna do routes, right? So let's get the routes. All right, so it's at this point um, that we're trying to make sure that it's a required, a required authenticated user. So let's go ahead and do that at the top. So try required. Uh, oh, it's uh, request dot required. Request dot required authentication um, authenticated we'll pass in the type so um, user dot type or user dot self like that and we shouldn't get an error I guess we do. Is this in our control? I don't think so. See, it should definitely have um, discardable result, but let's say let is equal. And let's go ahead and try this again. And what we'll do is once again, we'll sign up. Kilo first this time, Kilo, Loco, um, Kyle, and Lee. All right, and then when we do our get request, when we do it without an authentication token, missed that one. And we'll just paste that in there while we still got it. But what we'll do is we'll keep it off. And when we try to get the users, we should get an error. User has not been authenticated. All right. So when we turn it on, we should get back the list of users. So it's kind of weird because uh, I would think that this middleware would automatically require it. Yeah, that's kind of weird. But it is what it is. I mean, at least you have this. So this is how you would block the response from coming back. And as you can see, we're just getting back the IDs and the users, the usernames as the public object. So that's pretty much it, guys. I just wanted to learn that. I'm actually going to be using this very soon in, um, in an app of mine uh to make sure that you know you have to use authentication to use my apis i don't want anybody to just use my apis but yeah all right well thanks for tuning in make sure you guys well subscribe make sure you subscribe you know you gotta you gotta help your boy out you gotta help your boy out with the subscriptions and um yeah, let me know if there's any other topics that you guys want to see done in these live stream videos, and I'll probably go ahead and give it a cover. You know, it doesn't hurt for me to try to learn some of this stuff. And um, yeah, it seems that some people do like help, like uh, also learning, you know, with me or just coding while I'm coding. So some people like to do that. So yeah. All right. Go out there. Keep coding passionately. Later.